Sofa, always fun. It doesn't look like a leather sofa because it's been covered with a, a protective sofa cover just so the, the cats don't scratch it up because they love to scratch leather. But underneath this blue velvet scratch cover thingy, there is a, a very squeaky leather sofa. Ooh, let's adjust. Ugh. Why is everything wonky? Anyway, hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia. And it is my first day of my Christmas break. I thought I might vlog today because I'm planning to do some fun things that are legal to do in a lockdown. If you don't know, Germany has just gone into a second full on lockdown. In fact, the second lockdown is actually tougher than the first one. Uh, but that means that even though it is my Christmas break, I'm not going to be doing anything ridiculously exciting, but hopefully still some enjoyable things. This is going to be a vlog on the sort of cozy side of things rather than the woo exciting side of things. So let me tell you about my plans. First, I want to do some reading. Remember reading? Because I certainly don't. I haven't picked up a book in ages. In fact, I did a video recently about that. I'll link that in the description box if I remember later when I edit this video. So I want to read some. My current read is Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. Super atmospheric, very fun so far, but I'm not very far into it. So hopefully I'll get a chunk of that read. Second thing I want to, that's rude. The second thing I want to do is uh, make some biscuits because it is the Christmas period. And uh, yesterday, a big parcel arrived from my mum, which includes some German Christmas biscuit cutters. So I want to make some Christmas biscuits. I want to make them, obviously, for myself and for Bill. But I also want to make some for some friends and family to send, to post to them, friends back in the UK. I also want to make some for the neighbours in this new place because of the whole you know, situation. Um, I've not really been able to get to know the neighbors. I live in an apartment on the second floor. So there is two apartments underneath, first floor and ground floor. And then there is a house next door, which is where the landlord lives. And I want to make some biscuits for them as well, just to put, you know, a little bag of biscuits uh, outside of their doors as a display of superiority and dominance. I live in temporary accommodation, hence the leather sofa. And that means for the first time in my adult life, I live somewhere with an actual coffee maker and I don't think I'll be able to go back to instant after this. What was I talking about? Yes, things I want to do. The third thing I want to do, so we had reading and baking and the third thing I want to do is some knitting. With the parcel from my mother, I received some yarn that I'm knitting up into a jumper and I'll show you that later on as well. So reading, baking, knitting, perfect trio of cozy winter activities. Speaking of cozy, my mum also sent me this adorable poncho that she crocheted for me. And I know that it is 2020 and no one wears ponchos anymore, but can I just say I love this? This is so, Warm. It's essentially just like a wearable blanket. Also, despite being very good at crochet, my mother never actually weaves in her hands, so I'm gonna have to do that myself at some point. How cute is that? I love it. This is 
is really good. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, I've just read one chapter, which takes me a while. I'm a slow reader. And it's so atmospheric and it's so creepy. Uh, so Jamaica Inn is a historical novel. It's set in, I guess, the Regency period. I'm not sure if there is an exact year. But it says it's set 120 years ago before it was written. So it's set right at the beginning of the 19th century. The setting is this creepy pub in the middle of nowhere in Cornwall that is involved in some sort of shady business and you don't quite know what yet but it is probably very dark and demonic. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, it's definitely a perfect sort of winter read. You don't want to read this when it's warm and bright in the summer. But now it is uh, almost lunchtime so I'm going to start preparing my lunch. Normally I would just have a slice of bread and some spread of some variety or other, but since I am on holiday, I've got the time to actually cook myself some lunch. In previous vlogs in the UK, I've always found it really difficult to film sort of the lunch preparation process just because of the way the kitchen was laid out. It was quite dark, nowhere good to sort of place the camera, but I'm going to see if it's any better in this kitchen here and if uh, I can actually film <laughs> me making my lunch without setting the kitchen on fire or melting my camera. So there is actually some space to put the camera there, which is far enough away from the hob that I'm not worried about setting anything on fire or melting anything. You keep telling me you want to see me cook. I say you keep telling me, like two people have asked me. When Bill and I moved in here, we obviously had to quarantine, which means we couldn't go to the shops at all in the first like week and a half of us living here. So my mum offered to send me a parcel of food. If you have an Italian mother, then what I'm about to say will not surprise you in the slightest. Let me show you actually what she sent me. As sustenance, four packets of pasta, three of which are different types of spaghetti. So, <laughs> We got this, we got this, they're just very, very slightly different sizes of spaghetti and we got this, um, as you can tell I haven't even opened the others yet, we're still working our way through the first bag of spaghetti, then three bottles of passata of which I have managed to finish two. Some, actually I do really, really like this. This is, uh, it's in a water bottle, but this is really nice, fancy olive oil from the south of Italy that she gets from, I don't know, a friend, a cousin, I don't even know. And then also some fancy balsamic vinegar. And my favorite item that my mother sent me in the post, a kilo of pizza flour, but no yeast. <laughs> oh. Just gotta love Italian mothers. What I'm trying to say is I've been working my way through this amount of pasta because there isn't a whole lot of storage space in this kitchen and the storage cupboard is like a quarter full at least of pasta right now. So uh, today I'm having some more of these spaghetti with a tomato based vegetable sauce.
let that simmer for a bit. The secret in a good pasta sauce really is time. So even though I'm kind of hungry, I'm going to leave that to simmer for at least at least half an hour, but probably a little bit more than that. Hello, it's editing Claudia from the future. I just wanted to mention that the carrot hasn't gone off. This wasn't a rotted carrot I was using. It's supposed to look like that. It's a purple carrot, or as I like to call them, a goth carrot. Incidentally, this is the first time that I'm living in an open plan kind of apartment. Before living here, I lived in a house, and before that I lived in two traditionally cut apartments. But this is kind of open plan, so the kitchen is right over there. It's not really a separate space. And I kind of like it because I can just hang out here in the living room and just pop into the kitchen to stir the sauce every now and again. I can make sure that nothing burns, etc. So while the sauce bubbles away, I'm gonna go basically in and stir it every five minutes or so and keep it on a very low heat. But while the sauce bubbles away, I'm going to do a bit of knitting. This is my current project. Before moving here, I banned myself from buying any new yarn because obviously when you move, you don't want to buy extra bulky things that you then have to move with you. Uh, but I did put in an order for some yarn once I arrived here. This is what I'm making with it. This is going to be a jumper. I love knitting jumpers. They are by far my favorite thing to make. I love wearing jumpers. I love knitting jumpers. This is called the Cozy Classic Raglan by someone who's very quickly become my favorite independent knitwear designer, Jessie Made Designs. I'll put links to her Ravelry page and her Instagram in the description box. This is the third one of her designs that I'm knitting. And I keep going back to her because her designs are so clearly thought out and written out. She puts so much effort into these patterns. And you can really tell because I'm a beginner knitter. I've only been knitting for pretty much exactly a year. I feel like I started in December 2019. But her instructions are so obvious and clear and even when she uses complicated techniques, techniques that are complicated to me, for example, this pattern uses a tubular cast on, which I'd never done before, uh, but she writes everything out really clearly, and when that isn't enough, she includes links to videos that explain those techniques, and I found that really, really helpful, so highly recommend it. There you go, that is my lunch. Was that worth waiting about an hour for? Yes, it was, I think. This looks like a very delicious pasta dish, although <laughs> I'm sure you can tell there's way too much sauce for the amount of pasta I've got. I don't really like pasta with too much sauce, uh, but I really wanted to use up the aubergine and the carrot, so that's what I've got. I'll see you after lunch. I finished eating. I could go to sleep now I'm so tired and I'm tired for two reasons one is I just had a gigantic bowl of pasta 
But I think the bigger reason is that Beetle, who is now blissfully asleep in the bedroom, not there, that's Minerva, Beetle thought he'd have a little party last night in which he was jumping around the flat, chirping, scratching, running around. He had a wonderful time, but I wish he'd saved it for the day and not the middle of the night. I am not going to go and have a nap because I am not yet become like my mother, but I am going to have another coffee and then I really need to go out and go to the shop and buy the ingredients for the biscuits because I said I was going to make biscuits today and I am going to make biscuits today. But first, coffee. You alright, Peedle? You having a good time? Just relaxing a little bit after your party? Tiring, isn't it, running about at half past three in the morning? Well, don't let me disturb your sleep, eh? I'm still pretty sleepy, but I'm going to get ready to go to the shop now. And I've just realized that I haven't actually brushed my hair at all today. So I've done this entire vlog with wet, <laughs> unbrushed hair. Let's fix that straight away. so many baking ingredients. This is a bit ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, we all know that I didn't actually leave that flat with the camera running for the hour and a half that I was out doing the shopping. <laughs> Why has it become a thing for vlogs to do, to act like the camera isn't there, as if I had left the apartment with the camera running? In the name of honesty, let me show you what actually happened. Yeah, vlogging is ridiculous. I'm going to unpack the stuff. <laughs> I went to the one shop because there is only one of everything in this village. So I went to the one shop and then on the way back, I walked past the one greengrocer and he always has a stall outside, which is great. So I was able to buy some produce without even having to go inside anywhere because we all want to try and avoid that during lockdown. Speaking of lockdown, it was busier out in the village today than I've ever seen it. And I think that's because the schools are closed, so all of the children and teenagers were just out and about. So that was a bit weird. I spent so much time just crossing the road to avoid people. I had to buy all of these ingredients because uh, we just moved and even really basic things that I normally always have in my store cupboard like cinnamon, sugar, flour, and I had to buy all of that. But now I've got it and we're gonna make some biscuits. So this is a, just a really basic German Christmas biscuit recipe, vanilla flavored. Um, we'll start with half a kilo of flour. And yes, this is going to be rather large amounts of these biscuits because, like I said, I want to give some away. I have just remembered I don't even own a biscuit tin. Don't know where I'm actually going to be storing these when, when I'm done. Then we add 350 grams of butter. 
and this is nice and soft because well I've just I've just bought it this is 250 grams so I'll have to get some from the fridge as well so weirdly the Germans really love Irish butter and Kerrygold is really popular here and it's incredibly expensive but it was on half price today so I've never bought butter this cheap bit of a waste to put it in biscuits really but that's what we're doing today then I'm going to weigh out 160 grams of sugar in a separate bowl if we add this later and ideally you want to use icing sugar I do have icing sugar here but um, I'm cheap and icing sugar is expensive, so I'm using caster sugar, which works just fine as well. Just, um, you know, if you have a lot of icing sugar, use icing sugar. I think I might do like a half and half, so a little bit of uh, caster sugar and then a little bit of icing sugar. We've got the butter and flour in the big bowl. Let's add a little bit of salt to that. Ooh, <laughs> that's too much. Just a, I mean, a generous pinch. I have to say, I do like my baked goods on the salty side. I like a sweet and savoury kind of a mix. And then the last thing before I start mixing is separating out two eggs. And the yolk goes into the dough, batter, into the mix and the egg white is going to become our egg wash. So don't throw the egg white away even if we're not using it inside of the biscuits. Oh, oh, okay. I'm not going to tip it because then it'll just tip out. Oh, I, I could be a baking YouTuber. Um, easy. What's her name, the Australian one? I could do her job. Right, so then we uh, start mixing. So if you've ever made a crumble or any kind of shortbread dough, this is essentially what it is. It's just a, a shortcake. So you just kind of get in there and start mixing it up with your fingertips. I have just realized that I don't think there is a rolling pin in here. I don't even know where you buy a rolling pin. They just sort of happen, don't they? Anyway, um, I'm going to have to get creative later on in figuring out how to flatten these biscuits. Oh, get off there. Unbelievable. Do not worry. No cats were harmed. And more importantly, no biscuit ingredients were harmed. We are really, really strict with not allowing the cats on the counter here. Much more strict than we were in the UK. And the reason for that is because we have an electric hob here. In, in the UK, we had a gas hob. And with a gas hob, you don't really have to worry. These are not my plates, Beetle. That wasn't my plate that you broke there. That was someone else's plate. And now I'm going to have to explain to the landlord that you broke his plate. <sighs> you know what? There is no point in cleaning everything up now because the plate is already smashed on the floor and Beetle has already scampered and hid under the bed. There's absolutely no point in me faffing about with a dustpan and brush now while my hands are full of flour. So I'm just going to finish making this mixture. What I was saying is, Bill and I are discouraging the cats from getting on the counter, much more so here than we did in the UK, because in the UK we had a gas hob, and here we have an electric hob, and you can't see when the electric hob is hot, and we don't want the cats to burn their little kittle paws, and so we throw them off the counter pretty much any time they jump on here, but they've clearly not learned the lesson yet. I was talking about the upsides of having a open plan kitchen, and this is very much the downside, is that you can't lock the cats out of it when you're making something and you don't want them in your food. 
So now all of the butter is incorporated into the flour. I'm going to wash my hands and sweep up this mess and then I'll get back to you. So some footage seems to have gotten lost here because between the clip you've just seen and the next clip was a whole other bit where I mixed in the sugar into the mixture and the egg and then I put the dough in the fridge to cool and none of that for some reason has made it. I think what happened was that my SD card ran out of space but my camera failed to inform me about this. Oh, and obviously I also didn't film the bit where I swept up all of the shards from the plate that Beale chucked off the counter. The dough has been cooling in the fridge for long enough now, I think. It's been just over an hour. It's starting to get dark in here, so I want to finish this off. I have searched the kitchen. I've looked in every drawer, in every cupboard. I have not been able to find a rolling pin. Here's what I found instead. A meat mallet. I kind of like this as a weapon. Ooh. <laughs> I'm glad that went well. The oven's been preheating to 180 degrees centigrade, of course. And I have prepared a lined cookie sheet. Well, obviously I've wiped the counter with some hot water. And I've prepared a second sheet of baking paper, which I'm going to try and used to, to flatten this dough with. And then the other thing I did was whip up the egg yolks that were left over from the dough with a little bit of milk to make an egg wash. However, there is also no pastry brush in this apartment. So I'm gonna have to try and apply that with a fork. Okay, I'm going to get the dough out of the fridge again. It is now much later in the day and Bill is back. Fuck's there a camera in the kitchen? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm making biscuits. Call it a documentary. Mm. If you don't vlog it, it never happened, right? <laughs> and if it never happened, we can't eat them. Well, at least I got evidence that it was Beetle who smashed the plate and not me. Like he went, he scampered and like he hasn't come out since. I sent Robo Beetle in after him. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell them how the how the, the vacuum cleaner doesn't work while you're copying files? Because I'm good at network. This is not what this vlog is about. I'm going to cut this entire bit out. Tech vlog. You can do your own YouTube channel and talk about Robo Beetle. Hey, right, well, hello YouTube. Alright, get out of my way. Yeah. Finish the vlog here. I'm just going to blend in a picture of the finished biscuits, hopefully. That's the finished biscuits. They turn out pretty tasty if slightly too thick for my liking. So so with the rest of the batch of dough, I actually just stuck it in the freezer and I am going to purchase a rolling pin before I get back to that. Uh, biscuit dough keeps in the freezer for a while. The next batch is going to be rolled properly. And you'll just have to believe me that I'm going to bake some biscuits now because the camera battery is flashing at me and it's going to stop filming any moment. So thank you for watching. What? Of course, once the battery's empty, you just have to buy a new camera. <laughs> thank you for watching. Bye. No one wants your opinion.